Hello there. Welcome to my live session. That's amazing. So I just got a good email. <clears throat> Here we go. If you're watching on playback, stay tuned for who knows what the fuck is going to happen. And uh, yeah, you're watching a live session, so feel free to fast forward because sometimes these go for like two hours, an hour, 30 minutes, or five minutes. Who knows? But feel free to check it out. And uh, if you're tuning in live, welcome. Thanks for being here. And I appreciate you. And if you don't know what I do, my name is Darren Rios. I am a private strategist, personal consultant, life coach. And I come on live to do Q&As, pretty much, and talk about whatever is interesting. So if you guys have any questions, for those of you who know what I do, uh, feel free to ask. And uh, let's get into it. Let's have some fun. <clears throat> you might even catch me picking my nose. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Stupid. This is serious talk. How's everybody doing? Good? I'm going live on. Should I do TikTok? Maybe I'll go live on TikTok. Why not? No, I think YouTube might be better. So I'm live here on Instagram. For those of you who don't know, I do kind of a double live thing. And then I go live on um, other platforms as well. What's up, Brett? How did you start working as a personal coach? Um... I just decided that that's what I wanted to do. And I had already kind of been doing it for free in my career. So I figured, why don't I just like make this my number one thing, right? And like, yeah, because for those of you who don't know, I spent most of my career as a, as a consultant, but a photographer and graphic designer. And I did, I did a bunch of like art shit, if you will. And, uh, you know, I think I'm going to do TikTok. And so I would work on a lot of commercial projects and they would, I just found myself doing a fuck ton of consulting and creative consulting and then working with celebrities kind of made me realize like, I want to do this on a personal level. So I did it on a, on a brand level. And now a lot of the projects that I worked on, <clears throat> a lot of the projects that I worked on had like A-list celebrities t attached to them. So it was very, very unique, uh, especially for somebody who was in my position um, to have that opportunity. So anyway, I found myself working with these celebrities and these big brands and having conversations with these celebrities and, um, just really hearing the humanity side of the tippy top. And it made me realize, like, I don't want to do what I'm doing for brands. Like, helping. Like, it's fun. I still do it on occasion. But um, if, like, I don't want to be sitting here trying to tell a brand's story to sell products. I want to, how do I work with individuals to help them tell their stories? And help them really tell their story in, in a way that is in its fullest and not some like getting to the end of their life being like, well, I wish I would have pursued that with a bunch of shoulda, woulda, couldas. I'm the guy who comes in people's lives and helps them live a life that isn't full of shoulda, woulda, couldas or helps them live a life that when they get to the end of it, they're glad they lived that life. Right, and so I knew for myself it was just like, dude. You th you would think these people at the top have it all and they have it all figured out, and they don't, and they're just like you and I. So at the end of the day, that's what it kind of like. I was like, dude, this is what I need to be doing, and this is what I want to be doing. This is what I'm like. This is genuinely what comes to me naturally. It's something that I would do absolutely for free. 
Um, and I did for a very long time, like I said. So, yeah. Welcome everybody on TikTok. Definitely don't want to live a life of what ifs. I agree, man. Yeah, dude, like, because that's where you will end up if you don't try shit, take risks, do things that scare you. You'll end up living a life with a bunch of what ifs and shoulda, woulda, coulda. Can you recommend a top notch self help book? Um, I would say psycho cybernetics for understanding the mind and how it works with belief systems and also like identity and how that looks in the world. And I would say the four agreements for how to understand that everyone is in their own world and nothing is personal. Nothing is personal. Everything is a projection of that person's inner world. Right? And how to live in a place of understanding versus what the fuck is always happening to me. Um, if you guys are interested, I wrote an ebook called The Inner Alchemist, and it talks about all of this stuff. It's, it talks about limiting beliefs, how they affect your current reality, how to identify them um, and, and how to change them. And it's not, if you're not serious about doing this kind of work on yourself, don't bother. Uh, but if you are, or bother, I don't care, go give me the five bucks. <laughs> it's, it's, it's only five bucks, whatever. Um, but it's not easy work to do. So I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, go, go download my book and you'll be whipped in shape in no time. No, there's tools and there's practices in there that if you do, the likelihood of you changing your reality is very, very high. But if you don't, like they say, nothing changes unless something changes. You know what they say. Nothing changes if nothing changes. <laughs> like you know what they say. Nothing changes if somehow, some way, shape, or form, you never know if change is gonna come knocking on your door. Right? That's how it goes. <laughs> Y'all need to calm down, okay? You got one for me? Alright, cool. What is it? If I miss your question, feel free to ask again. Who is my ideal client? Anybody serious about doing work and who can... Uh, afford my service coming to you live from Fort Walton Florida and for those who can't that's why I do that's why I make content that's why I come on live to to be available for that I changed my life already from working 15 hours a day to 20 that's awesome okay is that is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> I'm currently teaching little kids horsemanship and it's going well, but I have always dreamed of 
being a fashion designer. Okay. So how can I help you? I'm I'm actually a fashion designer. I don't practice it anymore and I don't have any fashion design businesses, but um, at one point in my career, that's what I was doing. Like, not just like, oh, I printed t-shirts. No, like, cut and sew everything, making patterns, making all my own uh, silhouettes. I'm not sure if I should be happy where I'm at or go for it. Well, say you live to, to 150 years old and you get to your deathbed and you had never tried. How, do you, how are you going to feel? Yeah, I designed, but this is an American Apparel shirt. This is my um, clothing line called Pirates and Hooligans. So it's just a, a screen print, whatever, but I didn't make the the garment. But everything that I did make under Pirates and Hooligans, other than this t-shirt, um, was cut and sew. I made it by hand. What made you start all of this? Um, good question, Alan. So, I, I feel like so many things, but I always felt like I had a gift of perspective that I could see things in people that they couldn't quite see in themselves. And I had a knack for teaching, which is weird because I never graduated high school. I, I couldn't do the whole school system shit. And so, yeah. And then, so in my career as a consultant and photographer and, and artist, I worked with, I got to work with a lot of celebrities and a lot of really big brands. And so I thought, if I'm seeing these brands, like these heads of creative at these particular brands that I'm working with, not knowing what they're doing, asking for for my advice, which I was like 10 years younger than them, um, maybe I have something here. But then I was like, I don't want to be telling brand stories. I want to be telling human stories. And so when I got to have particular conversations or conversation with particular celebrities, it was like like my heroes it really made me see like I want to not just do this for brands, but I want to do this for humans and and people that that have a message but don't know how to convey it. And you'd be surprised, you know, like I've I've worked with a list celebrities who you would think they have it all together and they don't. And like, yeah, like they're good people, whatever, like most of them. But like, you would think like, you would think Johnny Depp wasn't insecure in front of a photo camera, right? But he, he's like, straight up, I mean, I'm don't, I'm not good at this, you know? And just shit like that, right? And so it's like, what is it? Like, do you want to be good at it? Yeah, I want to be good at it. Okay, cool. So let's identify what is it that's keeping you from wanting that, you know? So, um, like, yeah. This is, uh, hey, mate, how are you? Hey, what's up, man? Wow, you just witnessed a total ADD, distracted moment, brain fart. I don't know, I don't know, to be honest, part of me would want to know, but the other part figures it might be disappointing to be, like, being not what I thought I or hoped. But what if it is what you thought and hoped? 
What if it's better than what you thought and hoped? Would it be worth it? And if it's not, at least you tried. Would, you, would that not be good enough for you? Are you? If you're more content with wondering what could have been then you are, how do I phrase this? If you're more content with wondering what could have been, then you are discontent with never knowing, then don't ever try anything. Stay content with never knowing the truth. But there's some people out there that are like, I can't die unless I know. That I tried. That I fucking tried. You know? And so it's like, that that was me. Like, when I was 25, or when I was 18, I was like, I'm moving to Hollywood. I don't fucking know how, I don't know, but I'm I'm doing it. It took me six years to really make up my mind. And then I did. And it was better than I could have ever imagined. However, it was nothing like I had imagined. And it was fucking hard. So, I just knew in my heart that I'm like, I can't, I'm going to die one day. And, you know, before the age of 25, I had faced death many times. And, unfortunately, from the hands of other people. And so it was like a really scary place to be. And I just kind of knew, like, I am i don't know when or how, but I'm going to die one day, right? Do I, if I'm so lucky to have received the gift of 100 years of life or 90 years of life, and I have my family around me walking me out of this existence, do I want to look how do i want to feel looking back on my life do i want to be like damn man i wish i had fucking tried my hand at the at moving to hollywood i wish i had tried my hand at being a voice in this world but i didn't i just stayed working at starbucks and collected my 401k or whatever and just fucking worked my way up for somebody else's dream And I was like, nah, man, like, and so this type of shit is not for the faint of heart, especially if you don't come from financial backing or, you know, the only support that I had from my family was like my dad paid for my cell phone, right? And so it was like. All right, cool. Like I'm ready to sleep in my car and get whatever job I need to get and make it happen. And so if you're not willing to do that, if you're not willing to put in t- to really like go to war for what it is that you want in this world, then you'll never you'll never be fit to receive it. Like Like, people think peace should be just given to them. The only person that can give you peace is Christ. But what I'm talking about is, like, the only way to to receive that, that's a whole other topic of fucking discussion, but you have to choose peace. Right? And what's going to happen when you start choosing peace for yourself People are going to start throwing fucking rocks. Like, expect, expect engagement. Expect people to start acting hostile. Because when a person doesn't have peace within them, and they're hostile within themselves, the moment you become peaceful... You threaten their hostility. 
because we're all mirrors to each other to some degree. And if they look at you and they don't see themselves, they'll want to kill you for it. Right? Because what they'll see is something challenging them to be higher. And they can't accept that. So they'll they'll need to destroy your character, they'll need to badmouth you, they'll need to say things like, "Oh, what are you like zen now?" shit like that. Right? They'll 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 try to do anything. And it's not and here's the sad part. And the part that makes you kind of want to punch them in the face is that they're not even fully conscious of their behavior. But it doesn't make them not responsible for their behavior. So, you know what I mean? Like, think about somebody who sleepwalks and in their sleep. This would be a good movie. You guys should, you guys should make this. In their sleep, they're like a serial killer, right? But they're not even conscious. They're sleepwalking, doing some crazy shit. Well, they wake up and they get caught or whatever and now they have to they have to pay the price whether they were conscious of it or not you can't be like oh well i was sleeping so like no if you're gonna be acting that way when you're sleeping just because you're unconscious doesn't mean we shouldn't lock you up doesn't make you not responsible for your actions so there's a big difference here a lot of times people hear they're not even aware of what they're doing, but it's like, and they hear that as like an excuse and it's really not, you know, and I did for a very long time. And so every, every woman that my dad ever got with when I was a kid abused me like horribly. And so they just treated me like shit. Um, my mom yeah, she treated me like shit for a very long time. But it was a weird dynamic that I had with my mom. And the point that I'm trying to make is like, I had to go through all of this forgiveness for my dad, for my mom, and I still have to do it, right? And one thing that I struggled with the most was like, realizing that they're not even, they weren't even conscious of their own shit as to why they were behaving the way that they were. However, it doesn't make them, it doesn't wipe away their responsibility. And so I was able to forgive and let go entirely because it's like, oh, because I, I had this thing of like, yeah, but like they're responsible. Like the, something was still mad about it. Something was still like, you hurt me. You did this to me. How could you? But it's like, yeah, but they weren't, you know, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, right? And so it's like, <laughs> but it still doesn't make them responsible. And so when I understood that, it was like, oh, so they're, they're living with a distortion, it, which is almost like their punishment. And so if they're choosing to not take responsibility, that it's not your job to make them, right? It's not your job to be like, well, you need to be responsible, whatever. If they're refusing to be responsible and they're choosing to live blind and still behave in a way that is unhealthy, then that is their punishment. And it, and it's sad all around, but it's 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 kind of vindicating, if you will, because it's like they're not getting away with it. They're not, because the longer they choose to live that way, I'm repeating myself now. But the longer they choose to live in blindness, they're gonna keep running into walls and bumping their toe and breaking their nose and getting beat up by their surroundings in every in every which way and like 
It's simply because they choose not to turn on the lights. You no, know, I don't want to. I'm going to I'm going to turn on the lights and expose myself and feel like and then the truth about me not being enough will be revealed and I can't live with that truth. So I need to stay in the darkness. This is all of this shit it trickles down to human beings not believing they're enough as they are. And so they live with deep shame. But those of us who choose not to, it ain't easy. But we just, we can, we can kind of see in the dark a little bit better. And we don't, we don't bump ourselves as much as we used to. You know? And so it's like... Either way is difficult, but one way leads to light. You know what I mean? Yep, not not taking accountability, so they stuff it stuff it in the hypothetical closet to keep their mess. Yeah. Look, man, like that's why I tell people the the book that I wrote. It's in the link in my bio. About it's called the Inner Alchemist, and it it's like don't this isn't light work. If you're gonna dig deep, if you're gonna go inward, it's gonna take work. And it's going to take time. And the time it's going to take is a whole lifetime. So you might as well spend your life growing or festering, what, like whatever you want to do. And so if you, if you click the link in my bio, you'll see, you'll see that there. Um, it's called The Inner Alchemist. If you have issues, just let me know. But, um, yeah, so you're either growing or festering. The choice is totally yours, and they're they're both equally painful. N the issue with festering, though, is there is no light at the end of the tunnel. You fester and you die in your infestation, right? And then with growth, you you break and you form and you break and you form and you break and you form and you but every time you form you're growing and you're sprouting it's like a flower that's like comes from the dirt and it's like you know sprouting and then eventually just it blooms there's a there's a light at the end of that tunnel you know and so both are difficult just one has a happy ending. And not that kind of happy ending, you fucking weirdos. What's your opinion on dopamine fasting? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't really do that. I get all the dopamine I can. <laughs> um, but I do think it is... I think it's effective. Um, I think you just need to know yourself. And the thing with these types of fasts and stuff like that is like people are like, oh, like I need, to, I need to stop jacking off because this, this, and this. And it's like, cool, if that's how you feel, then yes. And does that behavior affect your psyche? Yes, it absolutely does. But so does sugar and all these other dopamine hits, right? So you need to understand, like, okay, how is this affecting me in in the standard of life that I want to live? Is it preventing me from living the standard of life that I want to live? And if it is, okay, then I need to do something about it. If it's not, 
if it's enhancing that, then okay, then that's the standard of life that I want to live. You know? Thanks, I'll check out your book for sure. Yeah. Awesome, Johnny. Thank you. Oh, I thought it said Johnny. It says journey. Vlog journey. Uh, how much of history... How much of history overall, cultural, society, music, movies, am American world history are you into? Um, <laughs> probably not enough, to be honest. What advice would you give to someone with PTSD? Um, I'll give you the advice that I give to myself. Um... Hold on tight, motherfucker, because this shit is going to hurt. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, sort of. PTSD is a disorder. It's a disease. Uh, it, it's, it's a fucked up wiring system of unprocessed um, information that here's what it is it is information it, it's a virus in the nervous system of a human being it's an electrical impulse virus so it's n it's not like a um, it's like a spiritual virus now it's almost like venom you guys ever see that movie venom and so what happens is like he gets he absorbs this being that's fucking crazy and has its own personality its own way of handling things and it's not always correct in life we get venoms we get these shocks these things that traumatize us and so Later on in life, we, like we don't know what it is, we can't fully process it. Like it's like it be, it like sets place in our nervous system. So the next time an action or something happens in your life that that uh, reminds you of that time that you took on that crazy thing that you couldn't process, that venom the venom comes out, right? Tries to interpret whatever's happening from that place. This is a rough analogy, but bear with me. And so when you can understand your PTSD, you can do something about it. A lot of the times people don't understand it, so they, they suppress it that doesn't help because any and so they'll avoid situations that they think might trigger it that is a band-aid for the issue and though a band-aid works for a time at the end of the day it's imperative that an individual understands what happened what and and what is happening within them so you might not understand what happened to its entirety, but you can understand what it's doing to you internally, biologically. And so this is this is this is the key to healing, to growth. Hello. Do you believe in God? Yes, I do. I believe in one true God who came incarnate in the form of man. Uh, who white people called Jesus and whose name was Yeshua. <laughs> I've been in therapy and have prescribed drugs for it, but I'm still healing. That's good. Uh, I don't know your particular situation. I'm not too fond of drugs because I just don't really believe in them. Um, I just, I believe in good 
therapy and good coaching. That's what I believe in. Um, however, I'm not entirely against um, psychiatric drugs that might help you for a short term. But I'm not qualified to talk about that, so... Do you know Aslan? No. I need more intervention, though, I think. Um, intervention, like, like addiction intervention? Those wires need to get fixed. Your brain does grow new ones with positive experiences. Yes, and that's... A really great point because what most people don't understand or, or know is that they can create positive experiences for themselves. They don't have to keep creating the same experience over and over. This pattern interruption is very difficult because it requires self-awareness and understanding of what's happening biochemically in the brain and body um, when something happens in you in your condition to behave in a particular way there's a there's stuff that happens in you biochemically however thankfully we're not just these biochemical or biological machines walking around we are more than just that. And, and we have consciousness and we can use that consciousness to be aware so that we can start creating new experiences. So the moment that somebody looks at you and is like, you look like a fucking idiot, you don't punch them in the face because, well, you, you're creating a new reality. And that reality is one of peace and one of understanding and one of power and not I'm going to I'm going to hurt somebody because I feel weak and ashamed and guilty and all this shit right all this sadness I'm going to even though I feel like doing it because of my trauma my PTSD I am not my PTSD and I am not my trauma I am who I choose to be in this very moment so who are you going to choose to be when you feel like punching that fool in the face? You, you're going to be the guy that you always were, the girl you always were, or you're going to create a new experience. And the moment you create a new experience, your brain goes, what the fuck are we doing here, bro? Go back. What are you doing? No, no go back. No. Mm -mm. Very uncomfortable here. And then you do it again, and it's like, your brain goes, okay, well, ma okay, but fuck you guy because this hurts, but okay, whatever. And then you do it again, and it hurts, and your brain's like, I'm sick of this shit. And you say, it's all right, you'll get used to it. And you do it again, and your brain starts saying, eventually, it's not so bad. I don't know what I was afraid of. I'm actually proud of myself because now I'm seeing my whole reality change. And all that mumbo jumbo metaphysical shit that that dude on the internet was talking about, I think there's something to it. And then you write me a nice letter and you say, thank you, Darren, for... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, if you want to, I, I'm not going to be hurt by it. I suffer from that. It's hard, but not impossible. You have to want to. Yeah, you have to want to, 100%. You should read about it. It's good connection with the spiritual power. I've been a therapist. Oh. 
Uh, I'm scared of what I'll do when I'm triggered by myself, for example, Christmas alone. Yeah, I know how that feels. I know how that feels. Um, there was a Christmas that, there was two of them, um, that it was rough, man. And so, uh, the first one, I had to, I called my dad, called family, and, um, like, I had to, like, force myself to, hey, can I hang out with you guys? Because I don't, I just, I don't want to be alone. I had never felt that in my entire life. Like, that shit was, like, I never thought I would. I'm like, I love being alone. Are you kidding me? So, it's important to not run from the discomfort, but learn from it. And really be like, yo, like, this is not cool. And granted, like, of course, I didn't know then what I know now about myself, about my, my brain and my psyche and and all this stuff. But the, there's no... Uh, yeah, the, there's no... Um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Sometimes you just have to reach out, right? Sometimes you just have to reach out. So, and that's okay. I think what I was going to allude to was like, where I'm at now, I mean, I don't even know if I can say this. Because I'm very happy with the woman that I'm with now and the family that I have. I've never, I've never been this happy in my life. So if I lost that, where would I be? Like, I wouldn't fucking want to to spend Christmas alone. You know what I mean? And so I would literally have to, like, call somebody. You know? So I get it. At the end of the day, now that I know what I've been through, I know what I can get through. Do you understand what I'm saying? When I was going through it at the time, I didn't know if I could make it. And that's why I was like, I need to fucking, uh-uh. I need to call somebody. I'm not okay. And I have, I have like voice re- memos and recordings. Like I remember like, I'm not okay. And, and I just like, I knew, because this is just a part of my identity. It's like, I don't quit, but I sure felt like it. And I just remember recording my conversation with a fr- with one of my best friends because I was like, I don't know how I'm going to make it out of this. And it doesn't feel like I'm going to. But I know that I will. I'm, and at the time, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I will. <laughs> so I want to have something that if I make it out of this, I want to look back and remind myself of the darkness that I was in that I never thought I would be in. So that if I ever have to face darkness again, I know what I've been through. So I know what I can get through. And it develops this like trust within yourself that you're like, now when I step into darkness or I face darkness, it's it's like, it's not whether it's going to hurt or not. It's, It's whether I can understand myself well enough to know that even when I can't feel anything like I'm out of my body and nothing exists I'll be okay I'll be okay and not just this telling yourself you'll be okay shit but like there's a there's a difference between believing and knowing and so This is where life gets really interesting. Is that that line between belief and knowledge and experience. So, 
I can sit here all day and tell you, don't touch the stove, it's hot. And yeah, maybe you will never touch the stove because you believed me. And good for you. <laughs> Some of y'all dumbasses, and myself included, I'm be like, let me see. Oh, fuck. <laughs> right? <laughs> ah, fuck. So like, now, now you have experience. And now you believe because you know. And in this, with that said, it's like this is this is the scenario with God, if you will. It's like there's people who believe, and they're happy, and they believe, and that's all they need is to believe. Me, on the other hand, it was like, yeah, I believe, but then it was like, hold on, let me see if this is really hot. And I played with way too much fire in my life and got burned way too many times and 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 grew from it. Now I'm like, oh, I believe, but now I know based on my experiences in in life. And so somebody can say, you're like, there is no God. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I ain't got nothing to prove. <laughs> you know, you can... I can sit there all day and people can sit there all day and be like, it wasn't hot. You didn't burn yourself. You know what I mean? And you'll be like, yes, I did. I swear I did. I, I totally did. It's like, why? For what? What do you What do you need to convince them for? Just tell them, go, touch it. See for yourself. So in the question of God, it's like, how do you tell somebody to go touch it? See for yourself. I just know what I've experienced. So, bit of a tangent there, but I think you uh, you understand. Be right back. I'm gonna get some water. All right. If that's true. I'm just tired of doing it. Okay.
dark shadow. How you doing? <sighs> Thanks for the advice. You're welcome. So faded. You go enjoy yourself. You go relax and do your thing. I'll make us dinner if you want. Good job. All right, guys, so I'm going to only be on here for a few more minutes, so feel free to ask any questions you'd like. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, yeah. If you missed it, um, I'll repeat everything. Just kidding. If you want to know more information about me, you can just hit the link in my bio or visit darrenreels.com. Uh, and if you want to, if you want to buy my book, it's five bucks. Um, if you're, first of all, if you're serious about change, if you're serious about doing that work that I was talking about earlier, that is not very easy to do. Um, th it's for you. Other than that, don't worry about it. How are you doing, man? What's up, Christian? Edgar, what's up, man? I need to make a change, need to leave a relationship, but I'm stuck feeling comfortable. So so what's it going to take for you to leave? And not even a good comfortable. The person just does everything for me. It kind of makes me... How do you purchase the book? So click the link in my bio. And if you scroll, what is this, Instagram? If you scroll down, you'll see it right there. It's called The Inner Alchemist. You just hit that link, and it'll take you directly there. I wonder if I can... Um Have you had any out of body experiences? Yes. Um, I, I've had an out of body experience in a dream one time, um, but never, never really like conscious. I've had some really like existential shit happen where it was like I was hyper aware of everything that was happening like the grass and the sun and shadows and tree like everything was just like i was completely detached from it and i was looking at it as if i was seeing it for the very first time it was bizarre a lot of like heavy meditation practitioners uh from what i've heard and even yoga people they they call this term or this state of consciousness something i forget what it's called but it's it's actually kind of scary 
but it's like if it just kind of comes on it's like whoa but yeah got your email cool guy all right sure thing Bebo. Yeah, it's almost like, um, man, it's almost like being in a state of consciousness that's like outside of any ego. It's like, and not even ego, but just like any sort of attachment. It's like your soul disconnects from your nervous system. No, it's like your soul disconnects from a certain... Um, sensory that you have like a perceptive perceptive sensory or something like I don't know it's a weird it's a weird experience if it's if it's in meditation or like for me like I was praying one day and like I got into that state because prayer for me is like meditation like uh, it's very meditative for me so I remember walking around my room feeling like that's a bed, that's a chair, and that's a closet. Like as if I was seeing it for the first time. And it was and it was like it wasn't scary, it was it was it was peaceful if anything. It was really interesting. The guy you had on the other day, is he a theologist? Uh, no, his name's, he's one of my best friends. Uh, he, as of the past few years, got um, really into theology and like a particular sect, I think it is. Like, um, I, I don't know what it is, like Orthodox Christian or some shit. I don't know. But, um, yeah, his name's Josh Reed, you can follow him, you can find him in my followers list and you can find him, or you can follow him, All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. Appreciate you all for being here. Thank you to everyone on TikTok and Instagram. And um, yeah, man. Shit, I'm looking forward to getting on live again. Uh, I'll either be on later. Not very likely. Um, and for sure tomorrow. So if you want to come join me, it'll be around the same time. And uh yeah, dude, come in, hang out, ask questions, share stories, connect. All right. And if you want to know more information about me, hit the link in my bio. My name is Darren Rios. I am a personal strategist, life coach, creative consultant, and um, yoga instructor. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And if you haven't got my ebook, it's five bucks. If you're serious about change, you want to understand your limiting beliefs, just get it. Thank me later. But only if you're serious about doing the work. Other than that, don't waste your time. Until then, have a good evening. And uh, I'm looking forward to um, going live again. I don't know, Al. I'm being weird. I'm just a weirdo. I don't know what to tell you. Peace.